Hi, I'm Dr. Abhishek Mangeshika, an expert in endometriosis surgery. Today we're going to discuss two significant and related conditions that can impact a woman's health. Endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer. Understanding these conditions, their differences and how they are treated is crucial for anyone who may be at risk. Whether you're a patient, a caregiver or a healthcare professional, this video is here to provide you with essential information. Endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer can have serious implications if not detected and treated early. By understanding these conditions, you can make informed decisions about your health or the health of someone you care for. Let's dive into what these conditions are, how they develop and what you can do if you're diagnosed. Endometrial hyperplasia is a condition where the lining of the uterus, known as the endometrium, becomes too thick. This usually happens due to an imbalance of hormones, specifically when there's too much estrogen and not enough progesterone to counterbalance it. There are different types of endometrial hyperplasia. Simple hyperplasia is the cells of the endometrium have a normal structure but are more numerous than usual. Complex hyperplasia is the cells are more crowded and the glandular structures within the endometrium become irregular. Atypical hyperplasia is the most concerning type where the cells begin to look abnormal and carry a higher risk of progressing to cancer. Symptoms of endometrial hyperplasia can include abnormal uterine bleeding, heavy or prolonged menstrual periods, and postmenopausal bleeding. These symptoms can sometimes be mistaken for other conditions, so it's crucial to consult your doctor if you experience them. Diagnosis usually involves a combination of the following. Pelvic examination, to identify any abnormalities, transvaginal ultrasound to assess the thickness of the endometrium, endometrial biopsies where a small sample of the endometrium is taken and examined under a microscope. Hysteroscopy is a minimally invasive procedure that allows direct visualization of the inside of the uterus. Treatment depends on the type and severity. Hormonal therapies, progesterone therapy may be recommended to counteract the effects of excess estrogen. Monitoring, regular follow-ups with ultrasounds or biopsies to monitor the condition's progress. Hysterectomy, in cases of atypical hyperplasia or when hormonal therapy is ineffective, removing the uterus may be necessary. Endometrial cancer occurs when cells in the endometrial lining grow uncontrollably, forming a malignant tumor. It's the most common type of uterine cancer, primarily affecting postmenopausal women, but it can occur at any age. There are two main types of endometrial cancer. Type 1, known as the endometrioid adenocarcinoma, the most common type, often associated with excess estrogen and usually develops slowly. Type 2, non-endometrioid, a more aggressive form not linked to estrogen, including subtypes like serous and clear cell carcinoma. Symptoms of endometrial cancer are similar to those of hyperplasia and include abnormal uterine bleeding, pelvic pain, and unusual vaginal discharge. If these symptoms persist, it's essential to seek medical advice promptly. Diagnosing endometrial cancer involves similar steps to hyperplasia, but often includes additional imaging tests to assess the spread of the disease. Treatment varies depending on the stage and the type. The primary treatment usually involves a hysterectomy, often with the removal of the ovaries and fallopian tubes. Certain cases may require removal of the associated lymph nodes in the pelvis or around the aorta. Radiation therapy is used post-surgery or when surgery isn't an option in certain types of cancers. Hormonal therapies are for early stage cancers or when surgery isn't viable. Chemotherapies are typically reserved for more advanced or aggressive cancers. Endometrial hyperplasia, particularly atypical hyperplasia, can progress to endometrial cancer if left untreated. The risk of progression makes early detection and appropriate treatment critical. Regular monitoring through biopsies and ultrasounds is essential for patients diagnosed with hyperplasia to catch any malignant changes early. If you have been diagnosed with endometrial hyperplasia, it's crucial to follow your doctor's recommendations for regular follow-ups. Early detection of both endometrial hyperplasia and cancer dramatically improve treatment outcomes. Regular checkups, especially if you're experiencing symptoms or fall into high-risk categories, are essential. Don't ignore symptoms like abnormal bleeding. Early intervention can be life-saving. Let's clear up some myths about the relation between endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer. While there's a risk, not all hyperplasia progresses to cancer, especially with proper treatment. While it's more common in the postmenopausal group, younger women can develop endometrial cancer as well. Hysterectomy is not the only treatment. Depending on the case, there are several treatment options available. Under medical supervision, hormonal therapy can be safe and effective, particularly for non-atypical hyperplasia. In summary, both endometrial hyperplasia and endometrial cancer are serious conditions, but with early detection and appropriate treatment, 
they can be managed effectively. Understanding the symptoms, risks and treatment options are crucial for taking control of your health. If you have any questions or concerns about these conditions, please leave them in the comments below. I'm here to help you with the information and support you need. And remember, if you're experiencing any of the above symptoms, don't wait to consult your doctor. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share this video to help spread awareness about these important health issues.